found everything. Oh, that's a bad sound. That is a bad sound. So it's end commander here with another retro tech thing. And this is my IBM ThinkPad 380D, a system that uh, I actually owned originally back in 1997 and has something of a interesting history attached to it as most systems of this vintage does. So I want to use this in an upcoming video and there's a teaser coming on what I'm going to be using it for, but um, I went down to the basement and retrieved it and I had to install a RAM upgrade because as it was when I first powered it on, it was only showing eight megabytes of RAM, which is what's soldered here on the main board. And as you can see right now, it's booting into OS2 warp, which is what I currently have installed. The story of this ThinkPad, I think is worth sharing. So originally this system was my dad's, he used it for work. And then it went to my mom who also used it for work. And then it was passed to me. And I took this thing on a lot of family trips, played a lot of good games on it. You know, simple DAWs games like Monopoly and Wheel of Fortune, but it, it did the job. And using this system just brings back happier times for me. So, um, Anyway, you know, I eventually this got replaced with an iBook that my school provided uh, and that uh, this got forgotten. So about, I guess, two years ago at this point, um, I was using my mom at her office and they were throwing out a lot of old computer stuff. And I noticed this ThinkPad, it was lying on its side with the PC card slots face up and it had been raining, so it was drenched. It's like, oh my God, that's my old ThinkPad. So I picked it up, it was on the curb, and I took it home, dried it off, and um, as soon as I was reasonably sure it was dry, you know, it let it sit for quite a long time. It, um, I plugged it in after sourcing a new power adapter, and it booted to a post error. As it turns out, these old IBM systems, they will not boot if their CMOS battery is dead, which is just a coin battery that you'll see uh, when we open it up. Put a new one in and it booted right up to Windows 95. Now, as you can see, I have OS2 Warp Connect on here. Uh, I was originally going to use this system for um, doing some retro software development. So it's got the full IBM developers toolkit on here but the lack of memory meant it was really slow. So I sourced a upgraded RAM chip and uh, then life happened and the project more or less sat in the back burner. So then this went into storage and eventually ended up in the basement of my building. So went down, fished it out and booted it back up to install that RAM upgrade since I still had it and be able to use it for the video I want to. So that's the basic story of this system. So let me shut it down and cut to the clip of me installing the RAM upgrade because uh, some interesting things happened and let's flip it over. And this is in fact the original battery for it, or at least I'm fairly certain it is. We have the memory door right here. So take a screwdriver and unscrew this. And what we have here is a bit of a mystery. There's the system CMOS battery here on the left and it has a 64 meg RAM chip in it already. Now I didn't install this and I'm fairly certain, given just what the price of memory would have been at the time, that someone, maybe my dad did this at another point, but he doesn't remember. So it's possible this chip is dead or there's something else wrong with it. I've run the memory check in BIOS. It doesn't see it, it uh, um, so I don't know. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to try the replacement one I have and let's we'll see if that one works, come on. I mean, the connectors, the connectors look good to me. I mean, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, but again, this has been rained on and I haven't recapped it or anything. This system's actually really quite difficult to work on. Um, 
when the optical drive I said I had replaced, you notice it doesn't sit flush. I don't know if it's because this optical drive wasn't exactly for the 380D because a lot of ThinkPads share parts at the time, but to get to that optical drive, I had to remove something like 30 something screws. So let me, let's open our me um, memory module here. And hopefully they sent the right part. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. What we got here? It's probably just a bill of sale or something. Yep. And it has my address on it, so I am not going to be showing that on camera. So right, let's see if this stick works and if it's just a bad RAM stick. I would expect it not to post or show or show a post error if that was the actual problem though. And uh, good, I have an anti-stack bag I can put the old one in. So, oh good, I don't even have to cut this one open. Touch on the metal just to make sure I don't kill it. And it goes, click. See, see that says it. This is EDO RAM. And this doesn't have. Yeah, it doesn't have any real distinct labels on it. So maybe this was not the right chip for this laptop, and it's just been sitting there doing nothing this whole time. So we'll see. This. Doing things live on camera is a little bit different for me. Most of my videos I script. So it's kind of an experiment for me in making content in new sorts of ways. So let's flip her back over. Get it plugged in. Ooh. I really wish I had a better table, but I don't. Okay. And then, all right, let's give it a go. See if it sees it. Fingers crossed. Well, that's something. It went to 4870 and it's showing a postcode. Okay, that, let's go to test. Let's see what it's actually saying. Uh, I don't want to actually run the test. What is it seeing? Memory. Let me bring this closer. Okay, it is seeing 50 megabytes total usable. I wonder if there's a bad bank on this. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just going, let's uh, just do a restart. Sometimes I've seen the system have throw a weird postcode or two on startup, so. Let me let it run its memory test. It will drop me into CMOS if it has an other issue. Yeah, see that time I didn't get a postcode. But this should see a full 64. And I don't know why. So getting into BIOS in this system is a bit of a magic trick. I find the easiest way to do it is just hold down a key and then, yeah, there's the stuck key postcode and that will give me the option to go into BIOS. That's classic IBM two beeps. Let's go test. It's, I don't want to do the full system test. It takes a really long time. We'll let it do the system board. I ran this before switching the, the RAM, the RAM. Let me finish a sentence, Dan. I, um, I ran this before I switched the RAM modules. And again, it found everything. Oh, that's a bad sound. That is a bad sound. Okay, so I found a post from 2013. So apparently it's particular about the type of memory, maybe why this chip wasn't working. And the chip I have is not an IBM stock part. Um, of course, this is talking about ThinkPad 385ED, but it more or less is talking about giving the same error code that what mine is giving. 
Apparently, if it's not an IBM official part, it tends to top out at 408, uh, not 400, 48 megabytes. Man, how technology has moved on. That being said, this probably is good enough. Um, I should definitely make sure it's actually good because obviously this is not going to run if it's complaining that it's not an IBM official part. Oh, IBM, why do you make your system so difficult to work on? Now, I think I probably should show what we are going to um, be installing on this with either 48 megabytes or the full 80, assuming I can get it to work. So let's power down. So down here, we have a box. And in this box is something really special I got off eBay. It is a sealed copy of Microsoft Back Office Server. Runs on Windows NT Server version 4 on CD-ROM, of course. So I'm not going to unseal this today, but there's going to be a video in the near future where we are going to unseal it, and it's going to get installed on our ThinkPad. And for those who aren't familiar with it, the Back Office line, Microsoft retired but um, it basically was a complete collection of all of Microsoft service products, including a copy of NT Server 4. Um, the main reason we need to upgrade the system RAM was the, it, the minimum requirement on the box is 64 megs, which is probably true if you're running Exchange or SQL, but just for uh, Server 4, it should be fine with 48, which is what we effectively have because I've run NT4 on as low as 8 and it matched and you know it's got a very large collection of software in the box it's a little hard to see for the plastic but you know we have server 4 exchange you know even comes with a copy of front page proxy server SQL server NSA uh, lots of things I hope to make individual videos about so I am really looking forward to it and I uh, hope you guys are too. So, now, topic of the memory test. Let's get to it. So, I went down to the basement and I uh, found a box of floppy disks and a USB floppy drive. And when I looked at the disks uh, to figure out which one I could override, I actually realized that there's a part of the story I forgot to tell. So this floppy disk has three DAWs on it as a boot disk, and it has a couple utilities that I actually wrote myself in C. So there it is booting up. Give it a second. And of course there's no auto exec, so it wants the time. So if we do DIR, um, we have the basic uh, free DAW stuff, and then we have hello and seer dump. So what hello does and is an application I wrote to do data recovery. Part of um, when I got this machine, I really didn't want to open it up if I didn't have to, just because of how difficult some laptops, especially this one, is to work on. So, But I wanted to get a full disk dump of the hard drive, and I didn't have a compact flash or any good way of getting media on and off. So what I decided to do, in possibly a fit of insanity, is I wrote a utility to read the, the sectors of the hard drive one by one, uh, using the BIOS interface and then use X modem to send them over serial just like an old BBS and then I used a USB to serial adapter to hook it up with my desktop computer at the time and let it dump the entire hard drive. Uh, took several days but I ended up with a complete dump of the drive and it even was bootable in a VM so that's how I know I got a good dump. So. That's probably my more one of my more interesting data recovery stories. So, um, of course, the point here is we do want to run memtest, and what I have is memtest 86 plus 4.2. It's an older version from 2011, but this version can be loaded from DAWs, and there it goes. It starts testing memory, so it sees that we have a Pentium uh, one 152 megahertz, eight kilobytes of L1 cache. It says unknown for the L2. I really would be surprised if this system had any, and 48 megabytes of memory, which is probably what BIOS is reporting through what's called the 
E, uh, the E820 map, which is a BIOS call for getting extended memory. So this is gonna run for several hours and we're gonna see if that RAM stick is any good. And I'll post a screenshot um, when it's done. So, okay, so it's uh, been about an hour, 40 minutes since I started this running and it has gone through free full tests, no errors, happy as a clam. So uh, I'm gonna say the memory is good. That being said, I did have a second thought about something. So let me turn this off. When I look back at the uh, footage, I, uh, I made a slight boo-boo. I didn't pull this battery when I did the memory and thinking about it, this battery, if this is in fact the factory original, is 23 years old. It's, I don't know if it's lithium ion or NICAD, obviously the label's gone, and I couldn't find it on Google, but this is a risk waiting to happen. I mean, the contacts are clean, I have checked it, and the machine will power on without it. So, I'm gonna do the smart thing and make sure this is not in here and I will dispose of it safely as soon as I have an opportunity to see, works fine without the battery. Uh, with the exception that the power light stays off, but yeah, minor. So, so you know, you, you sometimes think about things when you're YouTubing that you wouldn't think about otherwise. Now, I may be able to rebuild this cell um, although, oh yeah, you can definitely see this was water damaged. So, yeah. Well, you know, it's a learning experience and I don't always get it right, but you know, as long as you learn from your mistakes and fortunately nothing bad happened in this particular case, I, you know, life goes on. Anyway. Let me give my final sign off. This is N Commander, and I hope you all have a great day.